Lord, as we go on to share together in this devotion this morning, Lord, we pray that you send us help, even from the sanctuary, in the name of Jesus. Grant us, Lord, an entrance into the Holy of Holies, even by the blood of Jesus this morning. Help us, Lord, that that which is meant for your people this morning will come to us by mercy in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Yesterday, God began to labor over our lives, preparing our hearts, preparing our lives for what lies ahead of us. When God began to speak about what disqualifies a man in a battle front? Say it, it was not on the battleground, it happened in the house. And when you go to the house, it happened in the heart. When Samuel went to the house of Jesse. To anoint a king, seven of them were rejected. From that day on their forehead, boldly written was rejected. And we saw that they did not see any reason to grab the man of God and to say, what is wrong with us? This is the day we have been waiting for. This is what we have been dreaming about. Why is it today of all days that we will be rejected from this oil, this holy oil? They didn't cry. Instead, they dress up. They put on their army clothes and went to the battlefront. Only to suffer defeat and disgrace and brought shame even to the name of the Lord. They were standing there without anybody supporting them. They were standing there rejected. They were useless in the battle. And we cried to God yesterday that if we are not going to be useless in this coming battle before us to enthrone the Lord Jesus, then we need to settle the matter of our lives. Again, when the, the sons of Eli, we also discovered that there was a battle that was set in array. But then the sons of Eli, Ophni and Phinehas, they were already disqualified from the house and from what happened in their lives. 
And God was very particular. Whereas, when there was no battle, they were doing those things in the house. Touching people's wives, touching innocent women. And eating anyhow from the altar. God was like giving them another space to make it right. And that grace, they enjoyed it until the thing expired. They did not do anything about their situation. And then when it was now time for battle, there were issues take they have not sorted out and it was time for battle they were the act there they decided to go for the battle you know their end God spoke to us He said, when there was no battle, and they were doing those things, no problem, so much. But now that there is battle, if they don't settle those issues with God, they were not going to come back. And they did not come back. Friends, there may be some things you have indulged in before now. As if God... Is not so mindful about such things again. And you are becoming relaxed. You are becoming at ease. Even with sin. It did, it did not matter so much before now. But after now. If you don't do something about it. About it. Something may happen. May our case. Not be like that of Ophni and Phinehas in Jesus name. So, and God came like that for me yesterday. It was like prophetic utterances coming. I didn't see our brother preaching. I was seeing, I said, when has this man become a prophet? I know him as a teacher. But I saw so many prophetic utterances released, released, released for the coming days. I pray that God, in his mercy, will help us there in Jesus' name. I want to go on this morning to share with us the matter of our heart preparation for what life Heart preparation. For enthroning Jesus. We need, there is a kind of heart that can put Jesus on the throne. Let me start from Revelation chapter 12. Are you there with me? Revelation chapter 12, and I'm reading from verse 7. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceives the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God 
day and night. What is that? That verse 10, what is he saying there? Say, and I heard a loud voice making a declaration in heaven. He said, now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of Christ is established in heaven. What is that? It looked to me as if even for Jesus, the kingdom of Christ to be established in heaven, it was not bread and butter. What is before us? I saw God talking about war, talking about battle. What is before us is a great battle. To enthrone Jesus. It's not. It's not a child's play. For you to have a power shift. When I was in school, one young man declared himself, he said he want to contest for student union, either treasurer or something. Then the opponents, they wrote him a letter. They said, for you to even declare yourself, who are you? If you win, you will die. If you fail, you will die. Say for what now? Say for you. Even thinking that you are somebody to declare yourself to contest. If you win, you will die. If you fail, you will die. I say, what a trouble. What we are looking for is not something to negotiate in peace. Where God is wanting to put the Lord Jesus, the seat is not vacant. The seat, the throne is not empty. Somebody is sitting there. And even though they have declared him rejected, he is not willing to go. If you check through your Bible, you will discover that it's, it's like that. God has declared Saul rejected, but he was still on the throne. For him to move away, for David to step in, go and ask David. Ask David whether he was sleeping and then he woke up from his slumber and then he is yawning to sit on the throne. Is that what happened? No. Even for Solomon to take over from David, before Solomon was announced, Adonijah began to reign. The man declared himself, he said he was the king. What is going on? When God told Elijah to anoint Hazel and anoint Jehu, to be king, Hazel was to be king over Syria, Jehu over Israel. The thrones where these people were going to occupy, were they vacant? No. Ben Hadad was on the throne of Syria when God anointed Hazael to go. Ahab was still on the throne. When they say, Jehu, we go and take over. And you think that they want to leave. They did not just want to live like that. It was war. A serious battle. For Mordecai to be established in Babylon. 
For Esther to be established in the palace, there was a Haman. Who has plotted and was able to get the king to sign and to approve that all the Jews, including Queen Esther, so that she will not enjoy her reign in the palace. In order for her to be established, there was war. Say, if I perish, I do what? I perish. So, that is the first thing that I think should settle in our hearts this morning. That what we are going for is not bread and butter. Do you know that even in your own life, for you to enthrone Jesus in your heart, for him to become Lord over your life, do you think it's bread and butter? Eh? Some of us have been born again. We are genuinely converted, but there is one habit. Don't know how the team managed to enter your new life. And you have been struggling with it. You have been praying and crying. Has he gone? And you as if you don't know what to do. I'm telling you. Even for the new life to be established, it's not bread and butter. It's battle. Do you know what Luke chapter 11, verses 21 to 22 says? He says, when a strong man guard his palace, goods are safe. And nobody can tamper with his goods. So some of the things he has posted may soon be his goods. You think that it's an ordinary habit that you can just you can just take a decision and say, I've decided I will not do this thing again. How many times have you decided and you return back to it? The problem is that behind any misbehavior. There is the prince of this world who is saying Jesus will not reign here. Before anyone again, the old man is already on the throne. We are born with him. And he's not ready to go with a push. That's why you have been beating your child. For the past three years, you have been beating him over one matter, and he has not repented. And you are wondering what to do. There is a strong man, and that strong man is not ready to go until a battle is declared. He said, until a stronger than him come, then you will first of all bind him, and then take away his armor. Then you can now touch his goods. Now, to bind a strong man, you think he's sitting like this and say, okay, since you want to bind me, come and bind me. Ah, he's sitting down. He say, who are you? To bind, go away from here. He will push you. If you are not strong, you will fall down. To go and bind a strong man. So you may need two, three, four persons and say, hold him in that hand. Hold him. Let's grab him seriously and you bring rope and you bind him very well. Then you collect all his armors, carry them away before you go for his goods. Even for sinners to repent, that is the battle. You see a little habit and say it's, it's just ordinary telling lies. It's not ordinary telling lies. Behind that ordinary lies, there's a strong man. He's on the throne. And if you are going to overcome for Jesus to be established there, it takes what? A battle. Declare a war. Go before the Lord. Say you are a stronger man. Don't take this thing for granted. Sometimes when the word of God is coming, you know that what God is saying, even though they did not call your name, is describing your situation. As you are deciding to, and say it's time for altar call, come out. You are deciding to come out. Did he allow you? Say, are you the only one? Eh? Sit down. There are other persons here. You don't know what they are going through. 
Don't go there. And then you shake your body, shake your body, and say, Lord Jesus, come and help me here. Help me on my seat here. Help me. Help me. Help me. Anything they are asking the people at the front to do, you are doing it there. Then when you go back again, you continue. Who is doing that? He's a strong man. He's not helping you. And he's not lending you wisdom. He only wants you to remain his captive. For that to go, you have to be violent. You have to say, whosoever is looking at me, let them look at me. But I need to handle this issue for the last time. And go before the Lord weeping. Otherwise, left for him. This is what he will be doing. God will help us in Jesus' name. Now, say, and there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels, they played. They played. They cracked jokes. What did they do? They fought. Against the dragon. The dragon fought also. Can you see that the dragon was not sleeping? What did he also do? He fought. Go to verse 11. See how they overcome. And they overcame him. By the blood of the lamb. And by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto death. It is not a battle to fulfill all righteousness. Say this battle is already won. Let me just go. And then you go and, and to parade yourself. And then... 10 20 minutes, you have been declared as a winner. It's not a battle like that, it's a battle that you need to fight, not loving your life. Hey, this is the only thing that can enthrone Jesus. If you go to the book of Acts of the Apostles, what the people did before they were able to enthrone Jesus. And to fill the land with the doctrine of Jesus Christ. The Bible described them as men that hazarded their lives. Men that put their lives on the line. They were ready to die any moment for the cause for which they believe and that they want to establish. The thing is, is in their blood. They were not joking about it at all. One day they arrested Peter, John. Before the, the high priest. And they threatened them. Never to do what? To speak in that name again. See the way Peter answered them. He said, you yourself consider it what is right. Is he right to obey you, mere human beings like you, and then to disobey God? Even as he's talking like that, do you know that they can slap him in his mouth? And he was ready to collect the slap. Say, so we are not going to stop. They were so adamant, so importunate. So decided about enthroning Jesus. They will arrest them and beat them, put them in prison. Somehow a miracle will happen. They will come out of the prison. They follow in mourning straight to the synagogue. The people came out and said, The people you arrested yesterday and you said you put them in prison. They are not in the prison, no. 
They are standing there in the church. The same thing for which you arrested them, they are doing it. They are preaching. And they are preaching in the name of Jesus several times. They are there. I want to read one more scripture so that you can pray. Daniel chapter 3. These three young men in Babylon, how did they put their lives on the line in order to enthrone Jesus in a strange country in Babylon? I read from verse 1. Nebuchadnezzar the king made an image of gold whose height was three score cubits. And the bread thereof six cubits. He set it up in the plain of Dura, in the province of Babylon. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king sent to gather together the princes, the governors, and the captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces to come to the dedication of the image which Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. Then the princes, the governors, and the captains, the judges, and the treasurers, and the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces were gathered together unto the dedication of the image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. And they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. And an herald cried aloud to you, it is commanded, O people, nations, languages, that what time ye hear the sound and cornet, flute, harp, sackboard, psaltery, dulcimer, and all those things, and whoso falleth not down and worship shall the same hour be cast into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. Let me leave the story because you know it. There are, verse 12, there are certain Jews whom thou hast set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shedrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have not regarded thee. They serve not thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in his rage and fury, commanded to bring Shedrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought these men. Before the king, Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Do not ye serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up? Now, if ye be ready, when you hear the sound of all those things, bow down and worship. If not, I will cast you into the fiery furnace. Look at verse 16. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful. Everybody say we are not careful. To answer thee in this matter, we are not going to pray about it. We are not going to seek counsel. There is no dialogue over this matter. We don't have a meeting point as far as this matter is concerned. We already know our stand. We already know what to do. We already know what to do. If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace. And he will deliver us out of thy hand, O King. I don't have a problem with that. But if not, this is where I have a problem. Be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Now, what is the meaning of this statement? See the way they answered King Nebuchadnezzar. Three feeble Jews 
Did you hear the retinue of officers? Timber and caliber that were listed in that place. Who were present at that occasion. Governors, counselors, high court judges, treasurers, sheriffs. Men of timber and caliber were there and they were standing before a golden image. Bowing down to worship. And then these three guys also standing before these men and standing before the king Nebuchadnezzar with his red eyes. Say, let me hear from your mouth now. Did you say so? Sometimes you, you took a decision. And he said he wanted to give his life to Christ, his father was a Muslim. And the father said, If you say you want to give your life to Christ, then you will train yourself in your school. I'm not going to train you again. He said, Dad, it's not like that. If you say you should not go to church, there's no problem. And in his mind, you know what he was calculating? He said, Let me wait and finish my school. When I am now on my own, I can do what I want to do. That was what happened. Later started going to church, but he is never a vibrant Christian. But these, these, these three boys, they say, we are not able to answer you. Number one, our God, he will do what? He will deliver us. That one is easy for every one of us to say. But I know where the thing normally falls is the other end. So something quickly tells you, what if it fails? And God did not deliver you. What will happen? That's the thing that normally turn people away. That's the one that normally change people's mind. But these people were prepared on both sides. They say, our God will save us. But in case he decide not to save us now, we better get roasted in your fiery furnace to battle. And what is it? That they were choosing that great sacrifice to bow. What does it take to bow? My brethren, why will you die for nothing? When to bow does not take you a second. If you bow in Babylon, then you go and stand up for your God in Israel. Will that not look like a wisdom? To bow is to do like this. Just do like this. They say we will not do that. It will not take us five minutes. We will, but we will not do it. It will not look as if it will cost us anything. But we will not do it. And do you know that they don't have the story we are reading now? Eh? They didn't have the Bible to read. Was there another Shedrach, Meshach, and Abednego before them? They have not read anything like that before. They were the first. And they so believe. So they don't even know exactly what will happen. They were ready for anything that want to happen. I say, Meshach, Tom, maybe let's share the grace. If we part here, we will meet at the feet of the Lord. In case he did not come, oh, because sometimes he may not come, oh, that may be his will. Be ready. And I said, yes, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Let, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. So that they can be roasted like yam in the furnace. Until they were binding them, they were encouraging the king, go ahead and bind. You have not tied my hand well. Oh, tie it well. Tie my leg. Go on and bind. They bound them. And cast them, cast them, cast them. Oh, glory to God. We are the ones that want to live. We love life too much. But that's not Jesus. He says it's only when you hate your life, when you lose your life, that's when you gain it. But when you love and you want to save your life, you will do what? You will lose it. And they put them there. Is the confession of Nebuchadnezzar that I want to read now. Nobody preached to Nebuchadnezzar again. No? 
The kind of message Nebuchadnezzar preached that day in front of governors, in front of uh, counselors, in front of treasurers and high court judges, retinue of men that were there. Who among these three guys, who among them could preach that kind of message? Look at the message. Verse 22. No, 23. 24. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished and rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselors, Did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no heart, and the form of the fort is like the Son of God. Who told him about the Son of God? The Son of God was not yet born. How did the rev that revelation came to Nebuchadnezzar that someone is there called the Son of God, and he was not a prophet? If it's Isaiah, I know that Isaiah prophesied into that. But it's the action of these three young men that brought that revelation. Say the face is like that of the Son of God. Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spake and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, ye servants of the Most High God, hey, come, 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 come forth, come hither. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth of the midst of the fire. And the princes, governors, okay, all of them. Then, verse 28, Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has set, sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him and have changed the king's word. And yielded their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any God except their own God. Therefore, I make a decree that every people, nation, and language which speak anything amiss against the God of Shedda, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces, and their houses shall be made a dungeon hill. Because there is no other God that can deliver after this sort. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego in the province of Babylon. Hallelujah. What are we seeing here? Jesus is enthroned in the land of Babylon. Jesus is revealed. Nebuchadnezzar became a preacher. And he started preaching to the men that he has gathered. Oh, it was, it was beyond, it was a provincial revival. Because it was not one nation that was there. He was ruling provinces, many nations, and all of them were gathered there that day. And he issued this decree. As you are going back to your country, this is the God to serve. As you are going back to your... I think he used his hand to break that image in pieces. Wow! They were men that put their lives on the line. They were men that were not ready to leave. Seeing the name of the Lord being dragged in the mud. They were ready to die for this cause that they believe. You know, we, we, we as if God is not a gentleman like that. Too. He's also a radical God. And when you are taking a radical step, something is moving him on his throne.
something is touching him. He said, this boy is a kingdom boy. He's tapping at something. He's touching something. Let's stand by him. You mean this boy, this furnace that was heated seven times, they have looked away from it and they want to enter. How will I leave them to enter alone? But we don't want to take risks. We are so careful. We are too civilized. You got ready to preach in a bus. As you enter, they say no preaching, no smoking. He is preaching the same thing as smoking. Preaching deliver people. Smoking disturb people. Then you say they say there is no preaching. Keep quiet. Preach anything that want to happen. Let it happen. Even our discipleship, our entering into discipleship is not radical. We kept praying and praying as if God is a deaf God. Is fear. The people that followed, they followed at once. And those that were not able to follow, they went away. There is fear. Fear in someone's heart. If I leave this thing, what will happen to my children? Anything that wants to happen to the children, he do what? If I don't do this, what will happen to my house rent? That's not the issue. If God is saying this is what to do, he knows how to handle the house, the house rent. And if he doesn't handle it, anything that wants to happen, let it happen. The fear of what will happen if God does not come will not allow us to enthrone Jesus. This morning, I want us to pray. I want us to beg God. You know I said the heart preparation. This kind of heart who has no value on his own life, so to say, who has placed value on the kingdom being established, on Jesus being enthroned far above any other thing, and is ready to take risk for this cause. Give me that kind of heart. This kind of heart that can take hazard, that can put his life online because of this cause. Give me that kind of heart. God was moved. He came to them. And all the people that say that, God never left them. Esther said, if I perish, I do what? I perish. And she went in. Two things. If the king don't do this thing to me, then all my people, goodbye. So there were two things on her mind. Is either I come alive or... I'm dead. So if there are instructions, say in case I don't come back, oh, handle this, handle this, handle this like this, I'm going. If I perish, I perish. Did she perish? No. May God give us that kind of heart this morning in the name of Jesus. Even for Jesus to reign in your own life, this is it. There are some things as if if you don't do them, something will happen. The other day you say you want to live by faith. And then you throw your drugs away. And then when the test of living by faith came, and your symptoms, all your body started doing go do go do go do go do go do. Something told you that you need to apply wisdom here. Eh? It's taking drugs a sin. But you knew it was not a sin. You were the one that decided. What did you quickly do? And say, ah, let me not just die for nothing. I would have killed myself. So you stopped living by faith. You went to look for your drugs again. 
That's why you are not delivered. The thing will come oh, and your heart is made of if, if, if I die by faith, is it not the best way to die? If I die in faith because I believe in God, I die. People are dying of HIV, dying of many things, and you die in faith. Is that not the best that can ever happen? That's the best. Then something is doing you like that in your body, you quickly run away. Don't do that. Ask God to give you the heart this morning, and then this work will move. The problem we have in discipleship that God is like handicap is that there is a missing link. There is an omission. We hear the word of God where, and we preach the word of God where, but in between hearing the word of God and preaching the word of God, there is this vacuum, the action point. The word of God you hear has never become your own life. But you, are, you already want to preach like a big man of God. So, as we are coming for this meeting, some people are making their jotting. Not a jotting that will become their life. A jotting that will culminate to a preaching. You are missing it. The action point is for something to happen in your own life. It's for you to be decided. Anything that wants to happen, let it happen. If God is asking you, all the people that were businessmen before they came this way, is it all of them that God wants to continue as businessmen? If God is asking you and say, yes, I want, to, I want you to do human business for me now. What is keeping you there again? I know what is keeping you. I don't want to suffer. What if? What if God doesn't provide? What if? What if? What if it doesn't happen? Anything that wants to happen, let it do what? Let it happen. What else will happen again? There's nothing that will happen that is more than death. And whether you like it or not, is there anybody that is forever? No. People like Brother Paul say, if you want to kill me, you are sending me to a better life. To live, for me, is to, is to manifest Christ. Is to enthrone Christ everywhere. And if you say, I'm dying now, better life. I will just go and rest from all this trouble. So you can't threaten me with anything. Death could not threaten him. That's why he was ready to enter anywhere. What is the threat? That is not making you to, to, to carry Jesus to enthrone him wherever he wants. Ask the Lord to handle that threat this morning in the name of Jesus. Rise to your feet. Father, this is our heart cry this morning. We put our hands in your hands. We know we will not fail again because you never failed. And that has kept us Whatever that has kept us complacent, that has not allowed us to move, oh Lord, we hand them over to you today. Name of Jesus. That thing that normally make us to love our lives, love our children, to love our family members. More than Jesus. Cut it away from our life this morning. In the name of Jesus. Give us this heart. That is ready. To die. To go to any length. To go to any extent. For your name. And for your kingdom. To be established here on earth. Give us that heart. In the name of Jesus. Lord, as we go on, go on with us and show us your mercy. Do something that cannot be reversed in our lives in the course of this meeting. That going from here, we will go to be radical for you. 
to be stubborn for you. Refusing to bow in our offices. Whosoever is the organ that is giving that order. Say no. The authority did not allow it. And if you want it, bring this paper. And even if it means losing your job. Help us, oh God, to sign it with our hearts. In the name of Jesus. Enough of this complacency. Enough of this ease in Zion. What did you do to Esther? A woman. What did you do to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Young, feeble Jews who did not have the Bible that we are reading to read. Who did not have another account of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The only, the only thing they had was the Lord of Moses. And Lord, they stood for you. What did you do to them? Do to our hearts this morning. In the name of Jesus. This morning, we are seeing you talking to us. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they are no more here. They have finished. They have Jesus in their time. I hear God saying, where are the Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego of my time? Where are the Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego of my time? That we have found Jesus in our land. Where are they? Where are these men that can change the testimony of the king? Where are these men that can bring revelation that preaching cannot bring to the king? Where are these men that will turn a king who is an idol worshiper to become a preacher overnight? Where are they? Lord, make me one this morning. In the name of Jesus. Make my brethren whose hearts are burning and yearning for this matter. Make them one. Put them on the list this morning. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, blessed Father. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Oh.